At this place in history, we are not in Vermont. We are in Cornish, New Hampshire with Executive Director of the Vermont Historical Society, Steve Perkins. I'm guessing we're doing something that ties to Vermont. In fact, it ties New Hampshire to Vermont. There we go. Right? It's this really big bridge <laughs> that's behind us, and beautiful Vermont is right across the river behind us. We're talking about the Cornish Windsor Covered Bridge. And big it is. It's the first thing that catches your eye. It's very long. It is very long. Up until 2008, it was the longest covered bridge in the United States. A modern covered bridge was built in Ohio that supplanted its supremacy, but it is still the uh, longest two span um, covered bridge in the world, meaning there's only one pier there. So you've got two spans of wood going across and it's very old. It was built in 1866 and it's still taking automobile traffic today. So exactly how long is this bridge? So the bridge is 449 feet long and the length of that bridge uh, made it a very popular kissing bridge. <laughs> so the idea behind a kissing bridge is you could go into the bridge and it gave you enough privacy as you were crossing that bridge to you know, have a little smooch on your way across oh the boy. river. <laughs> so it's a town lattice truss bridge. And we've talked about that in the past yeah. in this program. You took a lot of small pieces of wood and, and created a, a crisscross pattern with it um, that, uh, you know, carpenters could then just kind of nail together and it helped support that bridge. So it was a private bridge um, starting in, from when it was built in 1866 all the way up until 1936 when the state of New Hampshire took over operation of it. And it was a toll bridge. And one of the interesting stories about this bridge when it first opened is it connected dry Vermont. So Vermont had been dry since 1850, meaning no alcohol in the state, to wet Cornish, New Hampshire. And so they only charged a couple of cents to cross the bridge into New Hampshire, but they charged more to go back into Vermont, knowing that more people wanted to go into New Hampshire to, you know, have their drink, and then they charge them a lot to get home. Why the need for a bridge in this particular spot? Well, you have the, the Connecticut River back here and the very important manufacturing town of Windsor. And so connecting the communities on either side was very important for the movement of goods and the movement of people. And of course, the train came through. The train bridge is right south of us across the, the river there. So you had the train going back and forth. So you need to move both people um, and goods. And it was a great business venture. You know, put it right here, make a lot of money on those tolls. At this place in history.